Hello. Hello. Citizens of the world. Today we're here to bring you our April book haul. And so we'll go straight to it. We're going to start off with our Thrift Books haul. Yes, the lovely folks over at Thrift Books were kind enough to sponsor this video and to give us a little bit of a incentive in order to get some books from them. And we did. Yeah. Thrift Books is actually a site that Mackie has used before, I believe, to get some secondhand copies of books that he's been looking for. And I've also used it in the past as well. They're great for finding really good bargain deals on books that you're looking for. Sometimes they have older covers, yeah, which you might want to get for your collection if you're that kind of person. Or if you just want to collect and read at a you know at a more affordable cost because maybe your library doesn't carry mm -hmm. it, uh, thrift books is a great alternative. So yeah, and they have all sorts of books on there. Yeah, every yeah. single genre you, you, you could imagine. And and like any good bazaar, yeah, any good bazaar, you're gonna want to sort of troll the, the lurk. A little yeah, bit you'll and have see to like you dig a little and find some good And you'll never know what you find. And so we found some stuff that we liked. Yep. And so thank you, and Thrift Books, for these books. Uh, and we'll link we'll to Thrift you. Books down below, and we'll also try to link to all these books if they're still up on the sites. So we're going to start with what we thought would have a dust jacket but didn't. Whoops, that was my bad, by the way. Because you have there was to a really because there was a <laughs> yeah you have to read the description. But there was but still it's a collected version of the, uh, the, the Trickster series uh, by Tamara. So for those of you who are familiar with Trickster's Choice and Trickster's Queen, it's a duology of uh, Elyon of Pirate Swoop. That's basically um, all you should say about gee, that. <laughs> what does that mean? Um, and <laughs> is it a prequel? Is it a not? Well, either way, it's set in the Tort uh, Tortal universe, and it collects both books all in one go. The dust jacket would have been pretty. Yeah, but it's still cool. But it's still cool because it's the one thing that's got. And you know, our timer for yourself is like right there in the corner. Yeah, so we like we collecting have something stuff new to add to it. Okay, my first book is actually a book that I'm sure Kristen from Super Spaceship is going to be very excited to see. It's a copy of Have a King by Joe Abercrombie. Kristen read this one, I want to say, last month. Oh, uh, Half March. a King. I thought um, I heard Have a she, King really really enjoyed it so much so that she put the second book on her tbr for the next month mm -hmm. so i don't even know anything else about it other than that kristen really enjoyed it so i will be reading this one very soon awesome okay i found a david baldacci book called the Campbell club it's a story about uh it, it's one of his first few books and it's one of those kind of like think tanks they figure out conspiracies and whatever okay. and they're called so the Campbell club uh my next book is a book called spindles end by robin mckinley this is a spin on the sleeping beauty fairy tale basically spindles end. um i am obsessed with this cover i get the point so of that title. i definitely wanted to pick up this particular edition of it i've been re meaning to read more of robin mckinley stuff specifically the stuff that is inspired by fairy tales I have read The Blue Sword, and I forget what the title of the second book is, but I read the two books in that series. Um, and I'm looking forward to reading this one as well. Righty, so we finally, finally have a copy of Stephen King's It. A portable one, mind you. It is you. portable. Uh, it is a mass market paperback, which I have a soft spot for because that's what I grew up on. You can carry it anywhere, and it has it tells the real it. tale with all of the crazy, insane details that no filmmaker would touch with a 10-foot pole. My next one is another Robin McKinley book, also with a pretty cover. It's Beauty by Robin McKinley, and this one is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. Ah. Can you tell that I am in this for the fairy tale retellings? I'm very excited to read this one because I love Beauty and the Beast, and I think it'll be fun to see another author's take on this story. And lastly, for my haul, I am so happy to finally be in possession of the I would assume latest copy of the first book of the Animorph series. They didn't quite redo all like 50 plus ish main, you know, books. Which we actually which own. Which we actually own. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Because uh, so any Animorphs fans, holler at me. Um, I'm so old. But um, hey, but the Animorphs was fun. Yeah, they totally were. And so I'm interested in this particular new copy because I hear they updated the, you know, the the uh, pop culture references, of which there were a ton back in the day. So whereas in the past, they would think that uh, one of the characters, Rachel, was described as a combination between Xena, Warrior Princess, and Storm from the X-Men. Do you think they changed that? I'm, I guess, no, who knows Xena anymore from the time this was released? Also, they changed the thing. They used to have a thing and where you Yeah, they used to have like more. all of the morphs so and sad. it was the, the cute, and now it's just this kind of creepy, uh, creepy kind of hologrammy. I am a, an iguana thing, and then I'm oh a boy gosh, with a really weird that just eye. brings back so many memories though. Right, and so love the Animorph series to this day. I feel it's still unrivaled and unparalleled in that genre of 85 million books in one series that are tiny. 
uh, which doesn't happen anymore these days, I think. Okay, and the last one for me is a book that I'm sure Rachel from Hello Charlie will be excited about, and it's Royal Heirs by Sharon Shin. This is the second book in her Elemental Blessing series. Um, the series is actually a companion novel, so you don't have to read them in order, but it's probably better if you do. And this one in particular focuses on a girl named Josetta, who you meet in the first book. Does she put on Royal Heirs? <laughs> Sorry, I just couldn't. I it was there. It was there. Okay, now, thank you so much again to Thrift Books for sponsoring that part of our haul. It's a cute haul. And now we're going to move on to review books. Review books, books absolutely. I, say. So you, I guess you can go. Yeah, I'm just going to start with these two. Yeah, so I'm going to um, do, you know, pre, uh, I'll be the front act to Alexis Re <laughs> review books. It's not my fault. It's totally not your fault. Okay, so I finally have a finished copy of The Universe is Expanding and So Am I. Never has there been a book sent to us or that exists right now that currently describes my state. Don't let, the, I'm wearing the cool clothes because this is true. Um, and it's a story, it, which is great because it's the second book too. Uh, the Earth, My Butt and Other Big Round Things, which is absolutely lovely by um, Carolyn Mackler. And I would say whoever this character is that's talking about um, their behind and their expansion uh, is my spirit creature already. So I will get to this in time. Uh, uh, and there's that. And second of all, there is Tradition by uh, Brennan Keeley, I want to say. Um, it's a deeply felt, powerful, devastating, and ultimately hopeful look at toxic rape culture and its destructive effects. So I'm probably going to end up sobbing hysterically again or feeling like terrible at the world just like I did when I read The Nowhere Girls. So um, I will brace myself for this. Okay, now we're going to move on to mine, which I will quickly, or as quickly as I can, cycle through. Uh, first we have If You Don't Have Anything Nice To Say by Layla Sales. This is her latest novel. It's about a girl who says something that gets taken the wrong way by the people of the internet who act as judge and jury and she basically has her entire life ruined because of what she said and even she herself admits that maybe what she said is actually wrong or was actually racist as what is being said oh, no. in this one but suffice to say it's one of those things where it was very brave of Layla Sales to take on something like this because it's the culture that we live in in this world right now yeah and it's also very hard to read because Winter is not necessarily Winter is the main character she's not necessarily an easy character to like either it's not that I dislike her either because I sympathize with her but it's also hard to completely be okay with the things she thinks sometimes and like the way she acts so it's still well written it's a very brave effort on Layla Sales part to bring sort of some light into what that experience might be like for certain people who have gone through it so that's that <laughs> next we have all the ever afters by Danielle Teller which is to sum up it is a story sort of like Wicked where the author has decided to give a voice to a character we don't really read or see much of and that is Cinderella's evil stepmother and that's oh. what this story <laughs> Lady, uh, what's her name? Oh, that's the Disney one. Also, it's just pretty, this cover. I'm really looking forward to reading this one. It comes out this month, so hopefully I will get to it by then too. That's cute. Next, we have Little White Lies, Never Trust a Debutante by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. And in the story, the main character and is well, approached shouldn't. by her estranged grandmother. Estranged estranged. grandmother. I am estranging my foot. No, sorry. <laughs> by her estranged grandmother and offered a contract in order to go down south and take part in all the debutante -like festivities. But then she starts to uncover secrets about the other debutantes and their families and shenanigans basically and I'm looking forward to this one I have such a soft spot for debutante stories I don't know why I just do so that should be really fun to read about next we have grace and fury by Tracy Banghart and this is about two sisters who have very different fates one is living as a grace or like the paragon of what a woman should be in the palace and the other one has been imprisoned for a dangerous secret that they've been keeping hidden furious. and they have to find a way to well, one of them, the one who's free, has to find a way to save the one who's in prison. So this should be fun too. Uh, next we have The Paris Wedding by Charlotte Nash. This is women's fiction and the main character is invited by a long time ago ex to his wedding in Paris. And oh, her entire retinue basically encourages her to go because it's an all expenses paid trip to Paris. And so... Why would you go to your happen. ex's all expense paid trip I don't know, Paris, I guess we're gonna though. find out. Uh, my friend Josephine over at Weird Revel has actually read this and she liked it, which okay. is part of the reason why I was really interested in picking it up myself. 
Bring on the pain. Paris. Um, okay, uh, the next couple of things are actually graphic novels. So Ooh. first we have All Summer Long. It's about a 13 year old, I think, what's her name? A 13 year old named Bina, and she is kind of having a different sort of summer because she and her best friend Austin have been having like weird vibes and he goes yeah. off to camp and she ends up becoming friends with his sister and it's basically about her summer. It came actually, if you would kindly hold that, it came with a poster. Oh, that's so cute. I actually and want to read this. It also has these guitar picks, which are really cool. They're branded in case you guys couldn't see I'm that. I'm totally reading this tonight. Are you stealing that? I'm totally stealing it. Okay, go right ahead. The next one, the next graphic novel, is one called Be Prepared, and this is by Vera Brosko. So it is about a little girl, well, not a little, like a, a young girl who goes off to a Russian summer camp. They're all little when they're tw little, younger um, than 25. And it just sounds like it's gonna be a really fun one. This one also came with a poster, which I'm now about to open. Dun, dun, dun. Poster and it also came with this patch that says made one friend. Oh, oh my god, it's my childhood. It's so cute. Oh, wait, no, because you actually have to make a friend. Um, I'm sorry, so um, but yeah, I'm stealing this. Why are you just taking all my god? This one you can't really take, I'm already claiming it. Now. Well, you can take it. It's called The City on the Other Side, and it's by Margaret Scott and Robin Robinson. And this is the story of this girl who finds herself in another world. Um, All right, she, the portal fantasy is yours. And she finds herself caught in the middle of this civil war that's going on between the Seelie and the Unseelie. So. Faye. <laughs> so, yeah. That I'm I know really that? To <laughs> goes to show how much Faye I know. Next, we have a finished Seelie, copy Seelie, of Seelie. Listen to Your Heart by Casey West. This is another one of Casey's YA rom com type stories. In this one, the main character isn't really excited when she gets invited to be part of her school's podcast and she ends up being the kind of like host where she has to give advice to the people who call in. Oh, that's fun. Um, the rom-com part of the story kicks in when she is starting to give advice to this anonymous caller who has a crush on this girl. And I'm pretty sure I know She's how it's gonna totally play out. She's totally the girl, But gosh. like, oh, I just love But that's why you want to read it because exactly. you want to know how that plays out. Exactly. Ugh. Next, we patient. have my So-Called Bollywood Life by Nisha Sharma. And this one actually sounds a little bit like From Twinkle With Love to me. It's about a main character who, she kind of broke up with one of this, like she had this idea that this guy named Raj was her soulmate and that they were destined to be together. But then Raj is apparently interested in someone else. Number one, that ruins everything. And two, he's kind of been put in charge of like their school, like film fest type thing, which uh -huh. she was gonna participate in. Um, it's sort of a, another one that sounds like a rom-com in a way because she ends up still getting involved in the film festival as encouraged by this other dude who comes into the picture and then she starts to question this whole idea of being destined for someone. So I hadn't even heard of this one before I got in the mail but it sounds really good so I hope I enjoy hey, it. It's, it's Bollywood if there's a lot of intricate choreography and oh my God, I just big, wish, big like, numbers right. that just appear out of nowhere. Um, this other book is slightly damaged because it came during a season when like snow and rain Oh no! Were pretty prominent so it's a little damaged so, which is why I forgot to show it originally but then the sequel came in and I was like, okay, now I really have to show it. So the book is Dark Breaks the Dawn, that's the first one, and Bright Burns the Night, which is the second one, and these are both by Sarah B. Larson. This is a duology, so this is the last and final whatever book. I'm not gonna look at the summary for that one because it's the second book, but this one is about a princess who finally comes into her powers, and she is trying to basically protect her kingdom and hold on to it while her mom is on the front lines of a war that they're fighting. But the king of the Dark Kingdom is determined to take over their kingdom, which is obviously the light, and that plays out. It's actually supposed to be uh, inspired by Swan, the Swan Lake, Swan Princess story. It's all yours, so, babe. It's all mine now. <laughs> um, and the last thing I got from publishers is one that I'm very, very excited about. It's a book called Sky in the Deep by Adrian Young, which I have read and loved. This one came out in April. It is supposedly part Wonder Woman, part Viking, which I think is sort of true, but it's more than that to me, so that's not necessarily the foot I would lead with when I'm talking about this one. It is about main character Elin, who has been taught all her life that her people, the Asuka, have to fight this other clan called the Riki. It's like a tradition for them. It's just what life is for them. And this goes on, and she's, she's a warrior in this fight, until one day in battle, she sees her brother who is supposed to be dead and he's alive on the field and he's fighting with their enemy. So after getting captured by the Riki and 
you know, letting her curiosity take her all the way up to the mountain with them, she starts to discover that maybe there's more to the Riki than she thought there was. And then when a common enemy that both the Riki and the Asuka need to fight against shows up, it's up to Elin and a couple of new people in the story to figure out how they can work together in order to defeat this great evil. It's so good. It's a standalone novel. It finishes off quite nicely and I really enjoyed it. It's so far one of my favorite things I've read in 2018. So you should definitely check it out. Well, now we're moving on to books that, that we got. Bought, yeah. Yeah, so books that we bought. And uh, I guess the only book that I had gotten, so I'll start with Ready Player One. Uh, I had read it pretty much well before the movie was I announced, and I absolutely loved it. Uh, Ready Player One, the movie, I mixed reviews from the fans because they're like, it didn't do what the book was, and then there's the whole fans are like, it, but it got the heart of the book, and I leaned to more towards, well, you can't put a lot of this stuff in, in film, mm -hmm. so uh, the book is a great, like the movie is a great companion to the book. I think it's wonderful. Can't wait to reread it. Uh, what a dream. Uh, and so. Uh, you reread other stuff all the time. I know, but the TBI, babe, it calls to me. I know, right? I've been reading a lot, though, so yeah, I can't really. So play. that's. Uh, and then on my on, on Kindle, what I had recently gotten Excuse were me. the last two Temeraire books uh, Blood of Tyrants and League of Dragons. So that rounds it up to books eight and nine for the Temeraire series. Uh, for those of you who watched or who didn't watch our last uh, recap. recap, was that a recap? Yeah. Yeah, our last what we read, I pretty much talked a little bit about uh, the Temeraire series where uh, Chinese. I'm sorry, that's all the time we have. Uh, I pretty much talked about how a in a world in a world where dragons <laughs> were actually <laughs> bred alongside human beings. No, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It, and it's it's set in like a kind of the seventh. I don't know. What it's like an it. alternative history. It's an alternative real. It's an it's an alternate reality where dragons are a thing, and, and every country has their own, yeah. and then they're in, and then they're used for military purposes. Exactly. Uh, it centers on the Brits who raise these dragons Napoleon. and they're fighting against Napoleon Sorry, Bonaparte. Sorry, I really like pointing that out. In, in this particular one, while well, during the war against Bonaparte, a Chinese celestial dragon, something that has never been seen outside of China, and it's a very powerful breed, uh, was hatched for a lowly British soldier who is now not so lowly anymore. And from there, shenanigans ensue in the war. And that's the end of the love. Okay, moving on to the Alexa went to London and decided to drag all these books back even though she didn't have a check-in suitcase <laughs> <laughs> portion of this haul. Uh, I went to London at the beginning of the month, which was very exciting and very fun, and there's a vlog for that if you want to see it. But I'm gonna quickly run through the things I picked up, because most of them are for my collection shelves anyway, so we're gonna run with that. First is this copy of The Tales of Beetle the Bard by J.K. Rowling, because I just didn't own this copy. It's so cute with this periwinkly... I just like that it's like blue, and it's got the whole like fairy tale vibe. It looks the like cover. the periwinkle crayon. So I really... Oh yeah, it does. I used to call it Perwinkle, because I couldn't read. Really, you called it for a I can't read. Um, and then Account. we have matching editions of The Secret Garden and A Little Princess by Frances Hodgson oh, Burnett. Such pretty colors. You guys know we collect this series. It's actually visible like up there in the upper, I don't know which side this would be in the video. Yeah. Upper whatever corner behind my head. Um, and these covers are just really cute. I just, I really like them a lot. So I was like, okay, of course I have to take them home. Um, and then there was this beautiful hardcover edition of A Little Princess which will shortly be joined by its pair. Our bigger favorite <laughs> in between conference. Sarah and Mary. It's true. Um, I really just like what they did to the cover with the little symbols on it. Um, this is only the second of these books that I own. I think the other one is Matilda, so. And then I went flea market shopping with my sister and we found this copy of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. And the reason it's special is because first of all, this cover, I don't have it. And second of all, it's a first edition. I'm trying to look for the page for you. La di da di da. Ta da! See, it's the first edition. Oops, right down there. Um, yeah, and I also really like this cover. If I could have bought all of them, I probably would have, but you know, suitcase, weight limits. Um, for my Sarah shelf, I have the Ooh. paperback edition of Tower of Dawn, but with the blue edges because as if it were anything else that made a difference. Nope, it's just the blue edges. <laughs> I mean, and I also just love this book because What's it's his Kale's name? book. Okay, there you go. It's Kale's book. Had to have it. Alexa um, has a thing for captains. And <laughs> understatement in the century. The <laughs> only book that I bought in London that was not a book that I had read before is this copy of A Wrinkle in Time. I hey. meant to read it before the movie came out. Did not happen. Also, have not seen the movie. Mackie has. Um, I do intend to read it because, first of all, it sounds really fun. Second of all, Mackie and Rachel from Hello Charlie have both read it. 
so I probably And it's excellent. It. It's exactly. really, really smart. And I also just really like this cover. It's really pretty. Uh, yeah, those are all the books I bought in London. Anyway, uh, so I may have blinked and lost my mind a little and bought a few classics, a few. <laughs> Um, Bring on I, the shame! Uh, so earlier I showed there off no a copy of A Little Princess, and here is a matching copy of The Secret it Garden. It's so cute, look at it's that. It's so cute because like I never expect them to use yellow for Secret Garden because it just doesn't make sense to me. It's always green in the my mind. Spring is bright. But um, I love, I love the patterns on this, and I just, it looks so cute with the other ones. Just look, they're so great together. Yes, they are. Um, so there's that, and then... <laughs> Another copy of The Secret Garden because the cover was irresistible. Can't help it. I have this thing with like girls who find doorways into places where they shouldn't be going, but then the place turns out to be pretty magical. And even though this is not like otherworldly magic, it's still pretty magical to me. Also, in addition to things I have not yet read, we have this copy of A Room with a View by Ian e. Forster, which is a book that I have been meaning to read for some time, and I thought I would just add it to my classic shelf in the hopes that I would eventually get to it. Plus, I just really like the way this cover looks. And then I also blinked and lost my mind because I was cleaning and I was like, oh, I don't really like the editions of the Anne of Green Gables that I have because Mackie already owns the same editions in the Philippines and I was yes, like, I we do. don't really need to keep them. So I <laughs> ended up buying this uh, lovely box set here, uh, a Tundra Books box set of the Anne of Green Gables series. So it wow. has the first eight books and they're all illustrated by I forget what her name is, McKay, I want to say. Um, first of all, let's appreciate the fact that the spines at the bottom show you pretty much like, the entire Avonlea. Isn't it amazing? Um, and because we're already here, and we might as well just show you. The reason why I really wanted these covers is because they're just so pretty. Oh. Do you see? Oh, it's, how baby, gorgeous it's baby these carrots. Are? Hey, that's a name. Do you see? My favorite. Do you see? Ugh, how gorgeous? This one is actually my favorite. Lie because the background is so gorgeous. Oh. Um, they're so beautiful. Like, just the How way they're done is, is just so incredible. Like, look. I also really like Rilla's cover, which is shocking to me. Um, Little Miss Ingleside. No, side. look at her cover, it's amazing. Damn. Isn't it so pretty? Um, I'll put the illustrator's, the illustrator's name down. I'm pretty sure it might be in here, or it should be in here anyway. Oh, Ellie McKay, that's the name of the illustrator. Um, yeah, so now I get to own a pretty box set of Anne. It also doesn't help that I suddenly feel this urge to reread because I love Anne so much and just like, mm. I think I was a lot actually- of yelling about Anne and Gilbert again in this house. No, it's not even just that, but like Anne and Diana, Anne and Marilla, Anne and, Anne and everyone else. That's basically how that works. Anne and- Me? No, Anne and, who's Marilla's husband? I mean brother. Uh, Matthew. Anne and Matthew. Um, so <laughs> Anne, <laughs> Ellen McKay also illustrated a couple of other books written by Ellen Montgomery. So we have the Emily trilogy, which is Emily of New Moon, Emily Climbs, and Emily's Quest. I've not read hey. any of these. Um, Ellen Montgomery? Yeah. Shoot, that's kind of cool. I haven't read any of those. I also haven't read the Mistress Pat. There's another, there are more books in the series, but I haven't read it. Um, Jane of Lantern Hill. Again, also more books in the series. But seriously, those covers though, ooh, they're not showing very well, but they're gorgeous. Just Our friend them. has a mistress pet. <laughs> and then these two books go together. It's The Story Girl and The Golden Road. I really am looking forward to this one because it's about a girl named Sarah who likes to tell stories. <laughs> I mean, Fair. come on! Any little princess fans there will know exactly why I'm excited about that. Okay, so we're done with me and my blinking. <laughs> and, you know, inadvertently spending all this money on pretty classics. Um, I guess my can go next. I do have a couple more to show you guys, but just two, so. Okay, so my comic book haul is tiny, but uh, I think full of heart. And so I finally, so I finally got a copy of DC Rebirth, okay. uh, which is pretty much the new 52 as kind of reintroduction into the, to the, to the, new normal, uh, of which uh, thread that involves Wally West, who disappeared practically throughout the entire thing. Uh, and by, Wall by disappeared and Wally West, I mean Carrot Top Wally West. Carrot Top comes back, who is one of the OG Titans, in which case I will segue to having bought both uh, the first two uh, Titans series when Wally comes back and ties everybody together and solves the mystery of why nobody knows each other. Okay. Uh, and uh, with, oh, yeah. with the lead up being Titans Hunt which I think for any original Titans fans, but when I say Titans, and which is great because they absolutely differentiate themselves from the Teen Titans, is because they were the first Teen Titans. 
So we are talking Robin and Aqualad and uh, the Kid Flash and uh, Wonder Girl, Roy Harper, who was back then Speedy, uh, those guys. Um, and we see them as adults and Wally comes back and stitches everybody's memories together. It's the most beautiful thing because they remember the most mundane things about each other, but then it's really the things that forge them as a friendship. And we're done. And the other books that uh, I had gotten, uh, this one was a gift for my birthday. It's Detective Comics number one for the, uh, the first TPB within the DC Rebirth as well. So I am digging the DC Rebirth series. And you have on the front covers, Tim Drake and Batwoman and yes, Clayface, that was weird. Of course, Batman had put them all together. And my favorite, Cassandra Kane. And spoiler, uh, that don't, I mean, no, her name is real spoiler. Like, that's really, like, her name. Because she is spoils. It? Yeah, that's totally her name. Uh, which is my favorite Batgirl, uh, not necessarily of all time, but probably second favorite, um, Stephanie Brown. So it's all of my faves in one book. Uh, I'm not even going to argue. And then, for $6, but that's such a good deal, we have The Crisis on Two Earths, uh, uh, a graphic novel with the Crisis on Two Earths DVD. Yes, Ooh, super you? cheap, very, very lovely. Uh, I don't think Alexa's watched this yet, so we're going to. It's gonna be a fun thing. Yeah. And uh, I've been sort of taken to collecting these um, graphic novel I know, DVD you've, you've collections. Gotten... Okay, I only have two more books. One is one that I bought myself. Uh, it's Love and Other Words by Christina Lauren. If the name sounds familiar to you, it's probably because I've been talking about their books for like the past few months. I have read four of their books now, love them all. Um, so I am looking forward to reading this one. This is actually their first uh, full women's fiction novel. And again, it's a story about a second chance romance, which I'm here for. I'm ready for this. And it follows two timelines, the falling in love timeline and the falling back in love timeline. Yeah. So can't wait. And the last book is actually one that Hello Chelly, Rachel from Hello Chelly passed on to me. She's read it. She really enjoyed it. She just didn't want to keep it. So it's a copy of The Astonishing Color of Act after by Emily X. R. Penn and it has some the story has a lot to do with depression and it has a magical realism spin to it. It's about the relationship between a daughter and her mother. Ta-da! <laughs> um, so I'm looking forward to reading it. Rachel tore through this one but then again when I say that I also think about the fact that she reads twice as fast as I do so who knows how long it'll take me. <laughs> And I thought I was a fast reader. Beautiful cover, really looking forward to reading this one. Thanks, Rachel, for giving me the book. Speaking of gifts, this is my favorite thing of the whole. Oh, right. And I'm notorious for, uh, you know, being sort of difficult to give gifts to, but I absolutely love this. And so it also gets 80 billion points for getting me for my birthday from City It's also got an ulterior motive because now I can buy the other two and not feel guilty about it. <laughs> because it's such a great book. It's a third book in the Illuminae series where uh, some terrible, terrible tragedies happen co uh, at the same time when an evil, evil corporation tries to wipe out evidence of uh, a certain uh, terraforming cl colony, colony. Yeah. Uh, and from there terrible terrible shenanigans ensue uh, and from the ashes rises a bunch of heroes who will absolutely not take this injustice lying down they will rise up take control and uh, prove to the world that they're terrible evil people and we'd this... show you also what it looks like on the inside because I'm assuming it has like the same like but we can't because spoilers but we can show you yeah and the reason why it looks like there's like redacted like items here is because the the, the format and this is for me the great this is why I love the series and so I'm so happy that Lexa got me this uh, because the entire series is told from the perspective of a Case, uh, several case files put together. So there are video transcripts and audio transcripts and chat messages that were extracted from uh, the actual events pieced together to form some kind of narrative to build a case for or against this evil company. And so it feels like somebody might as well have just given you a box full of video clips and, and chat transcripts. And you're trying to make sense. And you're trying to make sense of it. So it's a great experience. There's very few things out there that are like it. And I'm so glad I have book three. I'm gonna probably Yay. ditch my entire TV or just read this. Yeah. I did that. It was great. <laughs> Anyway, that is finally all the time we have for today. Those were all the books that we managed to somehow acquire in the month of April. You can expect just about the same amount of books next month. <laughs> and probably a separate haul from Mackie for Book Expo. I don't know how much of a haul oh I will God. have. I'm not entirely oh sure God, how many days right. I will be there. I'm never gonna get out of my TBR. Anyway, while Mackie- I'm so new. 
agonizes over here. Uh, tell us what you guys picked up in April. We would love to know any new April releases that you got particularly excited about. I would love to hear about that. And as always, if you're interested in hearing our thoughts in any of these books, or if you have questions about any of the editions, especially for all the stuff that I pick up for my collections, feel free to ask and I will try to answer. I swear, I will try to answer, actually answer, and I'm not just saying that this time. All right, till next time, bye!